Hi, my name is Neil Sathra, and I'm a product manager for Google Cloud AI. Hi, I'm Dini Fatiha, and I'm a product manager at DeepMind. If you're attending this talk, it's likely that you've already heard about the transformative benefits that machine learning can bring to your traditional manufacturing or industrial organization. But how do you realize those benefits without running into some of the common pitfalls that early stage AI practitioners tend to run into? Well, we've been deploying a technology we've been calling industrial adaptive controls in the real world for the past few years. And here we are today to share our learnings with you. What is industrial adaptive controls? It's a technology that can optimize your control loop to help you realize benefits such as minimizing your carbon footprint, gaining cost efficiencies, and maximizing your production throughput. And how does that work? Well, the first step is that you define your control loop optimization problem in the template shown here. You define your objective function, which might be minimizing your energy usage over the next few hours, or reducing the batch time required to produce one batch of chemicals. Next, you make available actions to the AI agent that it can take to realize that objective. Typically, this takes the form of setting various set point values on your pieces of equipment. Next up, we have the constraints. These are the safety and business rules that the AI must abide by in order to operate your plan safely. And finally, you have the state. This is all the sensor data that tells the AI how the plant is currently performing. Once you have that definition in place, you can go through this loop. So let's take an example where we're operating the chillers used to cool a data center. Every five minutes, we're collecting all the sensor data from the chiller plant and sending it up to the cloud-based AI. In the cloud, we're running the data through deep neural networks that can predict the future energy efficiency and the temperatures from all the various set point combinations possible. The AI will pick the right set point combination that will minimize your energy usage while obeying as many of your safety and business constraints as possible. And finally, it will make those set point recommendations available to your local building management system, which can validate and verify them before choosing to implement them locally. So where have we been using this technology? 25 years ago, AI beat the world champions at chess, and the next big milestone was beating the world champions at Go. A few years ago, DeepMind achieved this milestone. Next, we applied this technology to a real business problem that we had in our Google data centers, which was the high energy costs used to cool them. After seeing sustained and consistent savings, we made this technology available to external partners in a limited capacity to apply this in their data centers and commercial buildings and replicate the success we saw. And recently, we've been starting to explore applying this technology to the paint shop in the automotive production line, which is one of the most energy intensive steps in the production of a car. So now that you've heard about where we've been experiencing applying machine learning in the real world, off to Dini to share some of the best practices we've learned along the way. Thanks, Neil. When thinking about using AI for optimization, the first step is to ensure that the problem is well suited for AI. The problem should fit a machine learning formulation. A common formulation is one that Neil just described earlier with objectives, constraints, actions, and states, of which there should be a very high number of possible states and actions. Additionally, there should be enough headroom for optimization in the process for the AI to be able to drive significant value. And finally, as a general rule, the process should be one where errors are cheap. Next, think carefully about the objective of the optimization. An industrial process, say, in a manufacturing plant, may have several inputs and outputs. What would be most valuable to optimize? The amount of an input, the yield of an output, or perhaps overall energy used in the process? Once you figure that out, you then want to consider the constraints within which that objective should be pursued. If the objective is to minimize, let's say, the energy consumed during the industrial process, the constraint may be to do so while maintaining a certain speed of throughput or perhaps a certain temperature. During this exercise of determining objectives and constraints, it's also valuable to identify the real constraints versus the practical ones. 
For example, in, a, in an industrial mixing process, it may be tempting to identify temperature as the constraint, whereas the role of temperature is really to maintain a certain shear rate as the chemical mixes. So in this case, the shear rate would be the real constraint, and the temperature would be a practical one. Accurately identifying these distinctions could be beneficial for the AI's learning. Once we've defined the problem, the next step is to gather data to train the AI. You'll want to ask the following questions when accumulating data. Firstly, is it plentiful and complete? It's critical to get large amounts of historical data, ideally spanning one to several years. Not just that, but the data must be high resolution and contain all the relevant states. If you find some data is missing, which is common, calculating estimated values based on the rest of the data can work perfectly well. If you're not already doing so, it's vital that you start collecting data now so it's readily available when you need it. Secondly, if you have a good volume of data already, you'll want to verify that it's accurate. In the past, in order to check the accuracy of large volumes of data, we've written unit tests that sanity check the data against the domain knowledge of human operators. Finally, for optimization problems, the more varied the data, the better. In processes that are controlled manually, it's not uncommon for operators to choose set points that seem to work well and to use those repeatedly. But for the AI to find the best path to optimization, it will need to see more varied data to understand how the different actions can lead to different outcomes. When this type of high variety data was not possible, we conduct a guided exploration of the state space to help the AI survey all the possibilities at its disposal. How many of us know of an organizational change that failed because the people were not sufficiently bought into it? This is why as we get closer to deployment, we place a heavy focus on creating user trust. We do this by running the AI with human in the loop for a few weeks so that the operators can grow comfortable with how the AI is performing and even give us feed feedback. Additionally, we've built simulations for industrial processes to mimic how AI would impact them so that operators can view those results. This virtual approach is particularly useful for processes where errors are more costly. A critical component of deploying AI for optimization is ensuring we are able to measure its performance reliably. It can be tempting to turn on the technology and compare the performance of the system in a before and after manner. But there are many factors that affect the performance of such systems, so this approach can cause misleading results. Imagine trying to optimize energy consumption in an industrial facility. The results can vary from day to day based on anything from the weather to new processes to faulty equipment. To reduce the noise from these con confounding factors, the more robust way to measure the AI's performance is by conducting A-B testing for a period of time where the system runs with and without the AI's help on alternate days. Once there's enough data from the A-B tests to demonstrate the effectiveness of the technology, the A-B test can be stopped and the AI can be turned on permanently. It's not uncommon to hear claims about savings and optimizations using opaque methods. This is why we love the A-B testing method we've described. It's intuitive, transparent, and leaves little room for interpretation. Finally, in implementing AI to optimize various processes, we understand that each use case presents a different optimization problem. Off-the-shelf machine learning products are unlikely to work unless they are customized to your specific needs. This is why we've spent a lot of time augmenting our models with domain-specific knowledge to ensure our solution is well posed to achieve the full extent of optimization possible. With that, I'll hand it back to Neil to discuss our AI's performance in different domains. Thanks. So with all of these factors in place, we were able to consistently get 30 to 40% energy savings in our Google data centers. But as we were going to external sites, we acknowledged the variability between these sites and the, the difficulty in always getting all the boxes ticked. Hence, we set the success goal as crossing 20% savings in each of the sites. Similarly for you, you won't be able to get all the factors in place but it's up to you to determine how many you do get in place and accordingly what success looks like for you. So to recap, AI is not a magic wand. You gotta choose the right problem for it to solve and frame the problem in a way that fits the AI solution you're using. You might think you have a lot of training data, but you gotta verify that it is complete, accurate, 
and representative. This is not purely a technology problem. You gotta build human trust for your operators to actually adopt the technology. And for widespread adoption, you're gonna need to use objective and fair methods to measure the performance. Finally, be prepared to invest the effort required to take off-the-shelf products and inject them with the domain knowledge built by your human operators. With that, best of luck with your machine learning and digital transformation journey, and don't hesitate to reach out to your cloud contacts for guidance. Thanks. Goodbye.